Hello, brothers and sisters. How are you doing? Hope you had a good, good time. Now, uh, today I'll be speaking something really, really uh, so much amazing. And it makes me just want to, you know, you feel so much energized and uh, so much excited to talk about this. This is about the millennial kingdom. And this is something which I've, um, I've really done a lot of, you know, studying over and over because this is something that um, it's in bits, you know, here, there, here, there. And unless you're really keen, it will be very difficult for you to understand how the millennial kingdom uh, will be like, okay? Uh, so I was able to, uh, to join the dots uh, up and down here and there so that I can be able to see how exactly will that millennial kingdom be like, okay? So this is something that uh, I like also to teach you so that you can be able to understand likewise and uh, you can be able to know exactly how the millennial kingdom will be like. So uh, without wasting much time, first of all, I would like to explain exactly what does uh, the word millennial kingdom mean? You see, when I talk about millennial kingdom, many of you might be wondering, what exactly do you mean by millennial kingdom? This is the 1,000 years that uh, Jesus will be ruling here on earth. These are the 1,000 years that Jesus will be ruling here on earth, okay? And uh, this 1,000 years, they'll be really, really interesting and uh, so much will be happening during that time uh, because like the Bible says, what we have right now is, is just um, a picture or I may call it just, it's, it's just a, like an example of how it will be. You see people are really rushing and they are really enjoying uh, right now how they live. Many are saying you only live once. My friend, you don't live once. There is another kingdom which is coming and uh, that's why Jesus, when he came here, he was preaching about a message about a kingdom. Oh, you see, Jesus, uh, even when they were getting hold of him to go and crucify him, he, he told those guys, why are you arresting me as if, uh, as if you have not been with me? You know, if I wanted to uh, fight for myself, I could have told my, you know, my people, my disciples to fight for me. But my message is not, is not of this kingdom. The kingdom I'm, I'm talking about is not this literal kingdom that you're seeing. So there's another kingdom that Jesus was coming to preach about. And I, uh, this is the reason why you see the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and the religious leaders were always confused and they're wondering, is, is Jesus coming to establish another religion? Jesus was not coming to bring a religion. He was uh, basically... Uh, telling people about a kingdom that he would establish. And it's so beautiful to understand about this kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, which will be established. You remember, uh, you may ask, why is it called the kingdom of heaven? It's because uh, this, this is also called heaven. There's the, the first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven where God lives. Now we are living in the first heaven, which is also called earth. Okay, and also there is a second heaven where is is out there in the principalities and out there in the in in the where we see the the the, the universe out in the universe is where we have the second heaven and then the third heaven is where God lives. So having understood that, we already know that there is a kingdom which is coming, and it's going to be so much amazing. And uh, if possible, please just stay to the end of this. Um, teaching, you'll be so much excited about what I'm going to tell you, because this is something which I just read and it, it blew up my mind and I was like, wow, I can't wait, you know? Have you ever been in that situation you say, I can't wait to be here because it seems it will be all, all good things that you've always wanted as human beings. This is what it will be, okay? Now, like I've told you, millennial means a thousand, you know? Mill, mill is a, a French word means mill, uh, a meal, you know, meal is basically a thousand, okay, a thousand. So now this will be a, a, a kingdom which will be established by Jesus for a thousand years here on this earth. You see in this earth, if you're in the US, if you're in Uganda, if you're in Kenya, if you're in South Africa, if you're in um, Mexico, wherever you are, this, this, this earth that you're living in, Jesus will come and rule here for 1,000 years. And I think the reason why Jesus will be ruling here for 1,000 years is to show people how a righteous uh, judgment looks like. You see, right now, people are evil. They're, they're saying, 
I, uh, everybody is selfish. Others are corrupt. They want to pick things for themselves. Others, they want to oppress other people. But he wants to show you, if only you lived a righteous life, this is how it could have been. I think that's, that's the reason why Jesus will be ruling here and showing us a thousand years how they will be to show and explain to us how righteous judgment looks like. And of course, after that, I'll tell you what will happen. So without taking much time, I, I'm going to give, uh, uh, how many? I'm going to give uh, seven, different, seven different categories of people during the millennial kingdom, seven different categories. You know, God always deals with uh, the number seven, uses number seven so much. So I'm going to give you seven different categories of people during the millennial kingdom and how they will be operating, okay? Now, first of all, I'm going to show you how will Jesus be like at uh, the, millennial, uh, the millennial kingdom, there are a thousand years. How will Jesus be like? This is the first person that I'll uh, be addressing, okay? And of course, after Jesus, I'll address the wicked. How will it be for them? Uh, the uh, Israel, you know, I'll also address uh, the God's creation. How will they correlate? How will every uh, creation of God correlate between each other? And also the church. How will the church be like during that time, okay? And uh, of course, I'll speak about uh, after the millennium. How will it be after the 1,000 years? So this is going to be a very, very interesting teaching. And I like to, if you're there and um, you can be able to share this to other people, share them, share them right now so that they can be able to hear this. Uh, the sharing is not after the views. It's only after making other people get to hear and get the excitement to love Christ and to live for Christ, because that's all our duty, okay? Now, Christ are the millennium. Jesus are the millennium. So we see, uh, the Bible tells us something in Matthew 25. Let's go there. Matthew, Matthew 25, uh, from verse 31 to 46. 25, uh, 31 to 46. It tells us this. Huh? When the son of man shall come in his glory. Now, this is the second coming of Jesus Christ. When he comes back in his glory. Um, and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So Jesus, he will sit at the throne of his glory when he comes back. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them from one another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the gods. So he will divide, you know, you have heard that is very clearly and explainable very well that he will gather all nations of the earth and he will divide them. You know, he will, uh, he will divide them. This one's here, this one's here, this one's here. And let's see, what, what will he be talking about? And verse 33 of Matthew uh, 25, 33, it says, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left, okay? Mm -hmm. then, he sh uh, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, now these are the sheep, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I was hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me and I was sick and you visited me and I was in prison and you came to me. Then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when did we see uh, uh, an hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee a drink? When we, when we saw, when did we see you as a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see uh, you seek or in prison and came to thee, then the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it to one of the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. Now look at this. This is a judgment between the nations which loved Israel and those who did not. Because the Bible says very well in the uh, back, just before when you go to Matthew 24, it says that the brethren of Jesus are the Jews, you know, those are his kinsmen, his brethren, okay, and this one is a fact that we cannot deny, so all the nations which are always towards helping and standing with the nation of Israel and doing good for them, and they did everything which is right to the brethren of Jesus, they'll be put on the right hand, this is the judgment of nations, okay, this is the judgment of nations, and you have to understand that, and now let's see something else, 
And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, These are the goats. Depart from me, you cast into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was angered, uh, hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in, naked, and you clothed me not, sick and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungered, or a thirst, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and not minister to you? Then shall he answer unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did this one uh, to this one of the least of mine, you did it to me. And this shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting eternal. All right. All right. Now, when you look at this, these are the goat nations. Have you ever seen this Illuminati and the Satanists? They're always after a goat, you know? And even when you look at Baphomet, it's like a goat kind of thing. So these are the satanic groups and the nations and people and organizations which are always against the people of God, the nation of Israel, and any other person who was naming himself uh, with the nation of Israel. Remember, the Christians are also the seed of Abraham, okay? According to what uh, Paul tells us, that when you get saved, you become also a child of Abraham. You become also a, 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 of the seed of Abraham if you're, if you're saved. So being a seed of Abraham, it also means you're part of God's team. So anyone who was always helping God's team will be on the ship side, on the right side. And anyone who was always against the side of God will go this other side, okay? Are you seeing the picture? So now that is Jesus. When he comes to judge the nations and to judge different groups according to how they treated the people of God. Now, let's see something else. The glory of God will be revealed on that time. You see, right now, you cannot be able to see the glory of God. Why? Because it's not yet time. Let's see. The glory of God will be revealed on that time. Right now, we believe by faith. Faith is what? Like the Bible says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, let me just show, show you that one. The Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? So right now, salvation and believing is through faith. You know, believing is also another word of faith. Now, we believe in God without seeing him. But a time will come when everything will be revealed and we will see him as he is, you know. We will be able to see, this is the one that you have been believing all through. We have been understanding and saying, wow, is this the God that you have been believing in? Now we will be able to see him. Right now, salvation is by faith because we are believing on someone you have not seen. Remember what uh, Jesus told um, um, uh, Doubting Thomas, when a doubting Thomas saw Jesus come back and then, no, no, he was saying, I cannot believe until I see the risen Jesus. And then when Jesus came, the first person to address was Thomas. He told him, Thomas, touch here and feel if it is really me. Touch here also where I've been was pierced and see. And he said, oh, my God and my Lord, now I believe you. <laughs> and uh, you remember what Jesus told him? You, you believe me because you have seen me. But blessed are those who believe and they have not yet seen are you seeing that? And you're really blessed if you really believe and you have not seen Jesus because one day is going to be revealed. And I want to show you in the book of Isaiah 40 verse 5, it says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So there's a day when everything which you always believe by faith will be revealed. Now, I'm talking about Jesus, okay? Now, another thing that you'll have to understand about that time is uh, Jesus will rule, but then he will have a military kind of dictatorship government, but it is a righteous dictatorship. You know, people think uh, and they say that... Um, um, that uh, Jesus is, you know, is all this sissified kind of Jesus who, when you do something, oh, please, I'm meaning for you. That time, it will be a military dictatorship of Jesus, but in a righteous way. You see, back in the Garden of Eden, uh, God told uh, Adam and Eve, there are, there, 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 is, there are two ways here which I've given unto you. I've given you a free will. There's a tree of life. 
You can eat from the tree of life and listen to me what I'm telling you. I dictate all your things and uh, you have nothing to worry about. Concentrate, just enjoy life and let me take the will. Or you can decide to go your own way, eat from the tree of knowledge and evil, uh, or, or knowledge of good and evil and go your way. And when you go your way, you'll, you'll, you'll think for yourself, you do everything for yourself and, and I will not be involved. So the choice is yours. And of course we know, Satan deceived them and they thought, ah, we rather, we rather think for, the, for ourselves. We rather do things for ourselves. And that's how they fell. And of course, Satan is always deceiving people that you can do it better by yourself without the help of Jesus Christ. And now this time, Jesus is going to show you guys, if only you listen to me, you thought that, 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 that uh, I was a bad dictator and I'm not a bad dictator. I'm only a righteous judge and a righteous king and a righteous dictator and this is how if you follow my statutes this is how it's going to be now let's continue let's check something here now in the book of isaiah 2 verse 2 isaiah 2 2 let me show you here isaiah 2 2 it shows us how jesus government will be like in the millennial kingdom isaiah 2 2 uh, to 4 it says and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the Lord, of the God of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways and he will and we will walk in his paths. And out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So he'll be ruling from Jerusalem and everybody will have to go to Jerusalem to pay, uh, to, to, to worship God there. So nobody will be out of that. They will all have to go there uh, to worship God. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Listen, don't think it will just be an easy thing. But for those people who love to be to worship God and walk in his statues, it will be so easy and so amazing. And shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. This is the this is the quote that we see in the, with, with the UN. They always try to say uh, they, they use this. If you go to the UN, they have put that quote there, thinking that they will organize themselves until there will be no more war. The only time there will be peace is when Jesus comes back. That's the only time there will be peace because the Bible says, and it has affirmed that, and uh, you're waiting for peace, it's, you're waiting in vain until Jesus comes back, okay? So he will have that kind of dictatorship, military, government, but it will be so good because He's a righteous judge. He, if somebody does wrong, there's a, a there's righteous, you know, justice there. And then, the, uh, whatever you do, whatever happens, Jesus is going to judge rightfully, not corruptly, like the way people do right now. Okay. And let's also see Revelation two twenty seven. Let's see what it says about Jesus, him ruling. Revelation two twenty seven. It says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. You see, Satan is always fearing that Jesus will come and he will enforce everybody to being uh, to doing what is right, and he doesn't want that. He wants to give people some uh, some option of always doing mistakes and going against God. You see, there are those. The people who are always trying to be against God and they're saying, uh, no, no, we cannot do this. We, you know, we are liberals. We have to uh, think things in a different way and we have to, you know, use some common sense in one way or do this and this. But Jesus himself, when he'll be ruling, it will be you follow his rule and you're safe and you're in peace and everything goes well. You don't follow his rule everything goes haywire for you. And I'm going to show you how exactly it's going to be, okay? Now, another thing, the Bible continues and says that everyone, everyone, there'll be no people who are left outside of this. Everyone during that millennial kingdom, and I'll tell you who everyone is. Everyone shall have to worship Jesus. Everyone will have to worship Jesus. There'll be no saying, I'll not be here or this and that, and I'll tell you why. Look at the book of Psalms. 
the book of Psalms, it explains to us about this. Psalms uh, 2 from verse 6. It tells us that every person will have to worship Jesus, you know, like they say, by fire, by thunder. Uh, Psalms 2 from verse 6 to 7, it says, Yet have I set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. Zion is another name for Jerusalem. I will declare the decree that the Lord has said to me, thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee, okay? So now he will be exalted. I will set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. So when he's exalted up there, what does it mean? That everybody will have to follow what the king says. You know, one thing about uh, God's kingdom, Jesus' kingdom, it will not be a democracy. You, think, you know, democracy is whereby if you don't like the rule, you can change, you can go to parliament and uh, go and say something else and say, no, let's change this. Let's have some BBI. Let's change this and that. Let's change that. This one does not favor so and so. No, when it is a king, the word of the king is final. If he says, this is what is right, everybody has to follow. And this is what Satan doesn't want you to understand he wants you to think about religion and religion this and religion that and others are saying you see it's all about religion jesus did not come to bring a religion he came to give you a test of how his kingdom is like and that's why when you get saved you become a member in the kingdom of god right now which is spiritual the kingdom of god is spiritual is not meat and drink it is within you but then it is an example of how exactly it will be in the kingdom of heaven. You see, the millennial kingdom will be the kingdom of heaven, which was supposed to be established uh, uh, literally here on earth. But they killed Jesus and they say, no, crucify him. And then the kingdom of heaven, which was to be established, it was postponed uh, after 2,000 years, which will be for 1,000 years. And all these other time is what we have, the church age. And that's where now the gospel was revealed to Paul so that now we can become members of the kingdom of God waiting for the kingdom of heaven, which is literal, which Jesus was to bring here on earth. Now he'll bring it that time and he will be a king. So that one explains that everybody will have to worship the king and they'll have to go with the statues of the king. So we have seen Jesus at the millennial kingdom, how he'll be operating and these things. Now let's see. What about the wicked people, the wicked people of the earth, you know, in the millennial kingdom? What will happen to them? The wicked people, the people who are always uh, going against God. When he comes back, what will really happen? Okay, first and uh, foremost, let's see what will happen to Satan himself when Jesus comes back. Revelation 20, and uh, something very funny is that Satan is always making people, you see, if you really want to understand Satan so well, go and read the book of Revelation and the book of Genesis. Genesis uh, gives you his schemes and his tricks of deceiving people that you would be like, God, do this, go against God. And uh, Revelation shows his doom, how he will end up. And if you're following Satan, you must, you have to listen to this. Revelation 20 from verse 2. It says, uh, we'll go two to four. It says, and he laid hold on the dragon. Dragon is Satan. And he laid hold on the dragon. That old serpent, you remember him from Genesis? That deceiver, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. I'll come back to that, of course, later on. So you see the, uh, what will happen to Satan? He'll be bound and then he'll be thrown into the bottomless pit. I, I, I believe this is also a, another chamber or another place in hell down there because I'll explain to you why I also believe it's somewhere in hell down there because the Bible has also spoken about that. So Satan will be bound and then he'll be thrown down there in hell in the bottomless pit, which is also another compartment of hell in the darkness out there, okay? And uh, let's see what will happen to the beasts the Antichrist, and uh, the false prophet. What will happen to them when Jesus comes back? Now, let me show you a funny fact about the, the beasts, the Antichrist, the Antichrist and the false prophet. 
This will be the first ones in the lake of fire. The other ones will be opening the curtains of the lake of fire. Now, let's see. Revelation 19, uh, verse 20. It says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. You see? This is the Antichrist. And them that worshipped his image. This both, the, the Antichrist and the false prophet, this both were cast alive into a lake of fire. You see what the Bible is calling that lake of fire? Into a lake of fire. Meaning it is now introducing the word lake of fire because lake of fire is not the same as hell. And I'll do another teaching about that. Hell is beneath us, but a lake of fire is somewhere different, separated, which has been created as the eternal, you know, final point of all uh, wicked, uh, you know, wicked creation. They'll be at the lake of fire because later on we will see that the hell itself and every evil person will be thrown to the lake of fire. Even hell itself will be thrown out there. So everything which is evil and all the evil things will be thrown at the lake of fire. So this lake of fire and hell are different. So you have to understand this. So this both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Okay. So have you seen that? So they are the both of them, the new, the, 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 the first ones to get into the lake of fire, not even Satan. Satan first has gone to the bottomless pit because he, he still has an activity. He still has some assignment later on where he will be let loose for a little while after a thousand years. So this is really, really interesting. Now, let's see what, what will really make these people, what exactly will make people listen to Jesus during the millennial kingdom? You know, you may ask, if Jesus is a, a righteous judge, how will he be judging people who are doing wrong things? Remember, when I talk about judging people, don't think it's about judging the saints. Now, before I come to this, let me explain something so that you can understand the difference between who are being judged and who are judging others. Now, we know that right now, God recognizes three categories of, uh, of people. He recognizes the Jews, he recognizes the Gentiles, and he recognizes the church. So when a Gentile gets saved, he becomes a member of the church and he denounces no longer now, he's no longer a Gentile anymore. He's a member of the church, a member of the body of Christ. If a Jew today gets saved, he denounces his Jew, uh, Jew, uh, being a Jew and he becomes a member of church of the body of Christ. Now, right now, there is no Jew, there is no Gentile, um, uh, according to Christ, when you're a member of church. But if you're not a member of the body of Christ, then you're still either a Jew or a Gentile. So now, when the rapture happens, God will take all the, 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 people, uh, the, the, the people in the, his body, that is the church, everybody who is saved will be taken at the rapture. Now, they will go to the rapture and uh, first things first, they'll go and uh, they'll be uh, the judgment seat of Christ, whereby they will be there. And this is not like a, a, a major judgment. It's not a, major, a judgment of life and death. It is a judgment of uh, what you did for Christ uh, when you are here on earth, you know, after you got saved, what did you do for Christ? Like I'm preaching to you and many people have been able to be saved through my ministry. I'll be paid during the judgment seat of Christ and others, those who avoided temptations, avoided this and that, those who gave a good testimony, all that will be the, the, the judgment seat of Christ, which will happen. And uh, after those judgments are going on and after the judgment seat of Christ, people have been rewarded within that time. There's something which will be happening here on earth. Now, the people who had not believed in Jesus and they did not go with the, with, with the, with the rapture, there will be two categories now remaining, the Gentiles and the Jews. Now, first, let me start with the Gentiles. The Gentiles, they have instruction from God. And the instruction is, do not take the mark of the beast, okay? Don't take the mark of the beast. If you take the mark of the beast, you're going to be damned, okay? Now, that's the instruction. And of course, it will be salvation by faith plus works. You'll have to have faith in Jesus, believe that Jesus is the Messiah to the Jews. You can go back and check uh, one of my videos, how people will be saved during the, uh, the time of tribulation, you know, after the rapture, you can check another video. So now that time, people will be saved by faith plus works. You'll have to believe that Jesus is the, is the, is the, is the son of God. 
and uh, is God and also is the king of the Jews. And as well, he loved to uh, keep the commandments of God. He's told you that don't take the mark of the beast. So if you take the mark of the beast, you, 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 you're not saved and, uh, and definitely you'll be damned. So these people who will refuse to take the mark of the beast, many of them will be beheaded. And when you're beheaded, you'll become a tribulation saint. So you will go to heaven, yes, but now you'll not become the bride of Christ. You'll be a spectator. You'll be among us the guests in the wedding supper of the Lamb, which will happen in heaven, okay? So you'll be a guest there. Now, let's come to the other people who are the Jews. Now, to the Jews, they have been given an instruction by Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, and you can go there and check. They are told when uh, you see the abomination of desolation, stand in the holy place, okay? Stand where it's not supposed to be. Whosoever reads the book of uh, Daniel, go and read there and you'll be able to see what exactly is the abomination of desolation. I don't have time to speak about that. So when you see that is happening or when you see the Antichrist is starting to show up and to take force, let he that is in Judea flee to the mountains, okay? So Israelites, the Jews have been given instructions to flee to the mountains because they'll be in Judea. So when it talks about Judea, it doesn't talk about people in Russia, people in Kenya, people in the US. You know, there's no Judea there. Judea is only in Jerusalem. Is in, I mean, it is only in Israel. So they are told to run to the mountains. And of course, the place has already been prepared. And if you, if you have time, just go and check uh, the old city of Petra. It's already it's, it's a very wonderful place. You just, you just ask who did this and nobody even actually understands. Uh, others, they say it was created by, the, uh, by Solomon. Others, they, people just speculate. It's a very bulletproof, I don't know, bombproof kind of place which has already been created. That's exactly where the Jews will be hiding themselves. Okay. Now, there are, of course, some Jews who will refuse to go there because there are those who are always, no, we can't go, we can't do this and that. And and the Bible says that many of them, they will be killed. They will be killed from Jerusalem and from Israel itself. And it will happen a lot of massacre. And of course, remember, also in the world, the other places where it's out of Israel, people are also being killed likewise, you see. So now what happens is not every person will die on that day. Remember all the Bible says that if these days were not shortened, there's no, and no flesh would be saved. So means some flesh would be saved. There are some people who will be hiding maybe in some halls, maybe in some caves, maybe in some places away from the Antichrist, and maybe they'll make it. But of course, uh, it will be a tough thing. It's not be as easy as I may be speaking right now. Who are heathen and also the Jews who are hiding themselves because Jesus himself will come with his glory, and he will save them from the place where they'll be hiding themselves, uh, hiding uh, themselves, you know, from the from, from the Antichrist. And I, I don't want to go to that topic so deeply. I don't want this to be so uh, big. So those Jews, they will be in a mortal body, a normal body, okay? They'll be able to die normal, just the same way you are right now, you and me. So when Jesus comes down and he saves them, they will enter the millennial kingdom in a mortal body. Those are the Jews. And also the remnants from the world, the remnants of the, of the Gentiles, they'll also enter the millennial kingdom in their mortal body. So most people, they usually wonder, who will we be ruling that time? We'll be ruling these people, okay? So now let's come back again to heaven. So now the tribulation saints have already finished and now we have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then now we have come back with Jesus. Now we are the saints of Christ. We are the body of Christ and the saints. We come back, we fight with Jesus Christ and we fight for the Jews who will be hiding in that place, like I've told you, with Christ. And then we, and then Jesus, together with us, we finish up with the devil, you know, with the, the Antichrist. He's thrown into the lake of fire together, the false prophet, and Satan is cast into the bottomless pit. And then now Jesus takes over. Now, when Jesus takes over, remember, we are immortal. We have glorified bodies. We will be ruling with Christ. Now, how you will be ruling, it will depend with how you lived your life right now here on earth. There are some people who will be, um, you know, uh, 
big people in ruling big places, others ruling small places, others ruling in this way, others, you know, uh, commanders here, commanders there, you know, governor there, governor there, depending with the kind of work and how you lived your life for Christ right now when you're living here, how you preach to people, how you did the works of the ministry, you know, that will determine how you will be ruling and which place and how many privileges you will have. Are you seeing that? But now, you will be ruling the normal people, you know, you're ruling the Jews and you're ruling the Gentiles. And of course, there are many other instructions about that. And uh, I'll be coming to that later on in the teaching. You'll be, you'll be able to hear. So now the point we come back of why I explain this is to show you and uh, explain to you how will Jesus be justifying and making people to be able to follow his rule? He will make people follow his rule because of one thing hell will be there and it will be literal and people will be able to see hell. You remember when Jesus said that um, if your hand makes you sin, you rather cut it than have uh, your whole body thrown into hell, you know? And the Bible says, if your eye make you sin, pluck it out and throw it. It will rather be you be good with Christ than you let your whole body thrown into hell. You remember that? And you remember what also Jesus said that fear the one who can destroy both the body and soul in hell. Don't fear the one who can destroy only the body. Fear the one who can destroy both the body and soul in hell. We know when we die, it is only the soul which goes to hell right now. But how comes Jesus is talking about a body and a soul? It means you'll be able to be thrown alive, cast alive into hell there and then. You remember when Jesus comes, there'll be a big earthquake. And I tend to believe, I don't know if I'm right or wrong. Uh, this one you can uh, disagree or agree. And I believe that there'll be a big earthquake. And that earthquake, remember that the Dead Sea is the lowest point on earth. You know, probably just saying, you can go and do your own research. Probably there'll be a big, you know, crack, something like that. And you'll be able to see hell. And I'll explain to you why hell will be open that time. You'll be able to see these are people burning and you say, hey, I'd rather listen to what Jesus is telling me. I don't want to go here because people will be cast alive into hell during that time if you go against God. And that's how he will be able to put a righteous judgment. Now, let me show you something here. The book of Isaiah 34, it tells us about this. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah 34 verse 2. It tells us about this and it explains so beautifully and you'll be able to see how Jesus will be able to get a holy grip to these people, okay? Isaiah 34 verse 2, it says, mm, 34 verse 2, yes, 34 verse 2, it says, mm, we can go to, yes, 32 verse, 34 verse 2, it says, for the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury is upon all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them. He has delivered them uh, to the slaughter. Okay, now listen to what it's saying in verse six. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of the lambs and of goats and the fats of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bozra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Okay, and let's see verse nine to five. I want you to get the, the picture as I'm coming. Verse nine uh, to 15, it says, and the streams thereof shall be turned into a pitch. Now look at that. The streams will be turned into a pitch. And the dust thereof into brimstone. Does that not seem to be where they'll be uh, burning with brimstone? And uh, I don't know what the other one it says. And the land thereof shall become a burning pitch. So there's some place where there'll be a burning pitch burning with brimstone. Listen. Listen to this and you'll see there'll be, it's a hell because you'll be able to see even demons there, you know? Listen to this. It shall not be quenched. Are you saying this? This is talking about the millennial time. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the cormorant and the bitter bitten shall possess it. The all you see those seems uh, some uh, evil things. The all also and the raven shall dwell in it and he shall stretch upon it the line of confusions 
and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all their princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in our palaces, nettles and bumbles in the fortress thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for all. The wild beast of the desert shall also meet with the wild beast of the islands, and the satire shall also cry uh, to his fellow, and the screech all shall also rest there and find for ourselves a place of rest. There shall there shall the great all make her nest and lay and hatch and gather and and uh, under her shadow. There shall also vultures be gathered, everyone with us a mate. Now this one seems to be like some demonic things which will be happening in that valley, which will be burning, unquenchable with brimstone. Now to explain even much further about that will be exactly hell. Let's see, Isaiah 66, this one will have, uh, will nail the whole thing so that you can be able to understand is really hell which will be there burning that time and the people will be able to see they'll be able to see if you're wicked this is where you'll be thrown that time and i'm explaining this so that you can be able to understand very well isaiah 66 23 uh, to 24 it says and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one sabbath to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, says the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses. Listen to that. They are coming to worship every, every what? Every new moon to another from one Sabbath to another. They are coming to worship in Jerusalem where Jesus is. Eh? They are coming to worship before me, says the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have been that have transgressed against me, for their warm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. You see what the Bible is saying? When they are coming to worship in Israel, in Jerusalem, people will be passing and seeing in hell, they are saying, what? These are the people who transgressed against God. Hey, hey, I don't want to transgress against him, because they will see. You see, that time salvation will be by works. There's no faith. If uh, you're, you, you, you're in the normal world, eh, you know, you're a heathen and you transgress against God, you will definitely know where you're being thrown at. It will not be like, uh, you know, believe it's by faith. I know one day I'll be thrown to hell. I'll go to heaven. No, it will be by works. You'll be able to see this is where I'll be thrown because people will be going forth and seeing the carcasses, seeing the the bodies of the people who have been thrown in hell, where their worms dies not. Are you saying that it will be, that's exactly what will be happening at the millennium if you go against God. So I'm saying this as it is so clear so that you can be able to understand. Now, having said that, let's see, during the millennium, what will happen uh, with Israel? You see, Israel is also a chosen of God. Now, let's see what will really happen to Israel itself as a nation. Now, first of all, Jerusalem will be the capital of Israel, of the whole world, sorry. Jerusalem will be the capital of the whole world. It is not like the same way right now people are saying, oh, this country wants to be bigger than this. No, it will be, <laughs> that will be the capital, okay? Now, let's see, from, the, from Joel, Joel, the book of Joel explains to us, Joel 3.16 uh, to 17, it tells us this. Joel 16, uh, 3, 16 to 17 it tells us, the Lord shall roar out of Zion. The Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, okay? And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion. You see where he'll be dwelling? In Zion, my holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. So first and foremost, we understand that God will be ruling. Jesus will be ruling from Jerusalem, Zion, and he will be the king of the Jews, and every other person will be able to come and pay pilgrimage to Jesus during that time. So it's so interesting to see this. That is a uh, number one. And also we can confirm this again in the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah, we can see this. Uh, where is it? Zechariah, Zechariah. Let me show you this one. It's also very interesting to understand this. 
uh, what is Zechariah? This is a, a book which is, um, just a minute, let me check Zechariah, I mean Jeremiah. Let me show you, this one is also confirming about that. Uh, Daniel, Hosea, yes, it's here. The book of Zechariah, uh, 8.3, it tells us about the same thing. Zechariah 8.3, it says, Thus says the Lord, I am returned unto Zion. You see, he's saying that he'll come back to Zion. Zion is Jerusalem. He was there and he's coming back again. And, and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. And the mountain of the Lord uh, of hosts, the holy mountain. Okay. And um, so you have seen Jesus will be ruling from Jerusalem. Now, another thing about that is that all Jews, every person in Israel will be saved. Now, this one is something that I was debating with a brother yesterday. And we were talking about how comes all Israel will be saved? What is the reason? And why do you think all Israel will be saved? Now, let's go to the book of Romans. And let me show you how Israel will be saved. Romans eleven twenty six. 26. Uh, actually start from uh, 25, 25 to 28, Romans 11, 25 to 28. It says, for I will not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. This is Paul telling uh, the, the, the church that, guys, don't be ignorant of this mystery, okay? Don't be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part, is happened to Israel. So right now, they are partly blind. Why is it partly? Because there are some Jews who are getting saved also. They are becoming members of the, of the church. But the others are still blind. They are confused. They don't know if Jesus is really their Messiah. That blindness, in part, is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. You see the reason why the Jews right now, they are unbelievers, they are non-believers, they don't believe in Jesus, is because... They, God did this intentionally so that he could save the Gentiles. Imagine if they could have believed in Jesus at that time and completely Jesus could have, you know, set up his kingdom in Jerusalem and then the Gentiles, that would be it. But God had mercy on us, the Gentiles. So he tells us, don't be ignorant about this. For those who are saying, oh, hate the Jews. Uh, Jews are done. You know, we don't care about the Jews. See what Paul is saying in verse 26. And so shall all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my commandment and uh, my covenant unto them. Uh, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, you see, he has talked about the Jews. And now he's talking about the gospel. He's saying, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. So for those who are hating the Jews, know that they are enemies of God right now for your sake. But as touching the election, listen to what Paul is saying, as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Because, of the, because God had a covenant with them, with, the, uh, with their father, who is Abraham, they are still the, the, the beloved of God because of the covenant which he had with them, okay? So you should not hate the Jews and you should not say these people don't believe in Jesus. It happened like this. No, the Bible does not tell us that. It tells us right now they are blind because of you so that you, the church age can come and people during the church age can be saved so that you don't have be damned. You remember that uh, uh, the world back then, it was a very evil world. And God chose Abraham, who was a righteous man, who wanted to go again in, uh, according to the statutes of God. And the other people were against God. And God chose Abraham. And from Abraham, now we have the Jews. So they were chosen because they were good people and they followed the statutes of God. Every other person could have gone you know, to hell and be damned. But God had mercy. And through Abraham, Anyone who believes in Jesus, he also becomes a, a, a son of Abraham. You are, you are Abraham's children, seed. You become Abraham's uh, seed by faith. You know, when you believe, you also become in the household of faith, you know, at the household of Abraham. But now that's another story to explain. So you may ask, when will the Jews be saved? 
you remember that instruction that they were given to go and hide themselves in the mountain? When they'll be there, the Bible says, they'll be surrounded by armies and that will be the, the, the final war, which is called the, the, the war of Armageddon. And the Antichrist and his armies, they'll be coming to destroy them in that wilderness where they'll be, they'll be hiding. And Jesus will come, show up with his glory and they will look at him and they cry. The Bible says they will see whom they pierced and they will mourn like a, 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 a woman who mourns his only child. And they will tell Jesus, please, now we believe that you are a Messiah. Please help us. This Antichrist is about to finish us up. And now that time when they'll cry to God in unison together in the place where they'll be hiding, Jesus is going to save them. And that is when all Israel will be saved. Of course, it is not every other person who has uh, died. You know, people can say, what about those who are, who are dead? Those who are dead, their fate is already done. Okay. But those will be alive. And I believe it will only be a third of the, the Jews that we see today. It will only be a third because the Bible says not everyone uh, will be able to go there. Many will refuse and they'll say, no, we don't want to go there. They'll be killed in Jerusalem. They'll be killed by the Antichrist. But those who will go and hide themselves, just about a third remnant, all of them, they'll be saved. And that will be a representation of the whole of, uh, of the Jews, okay? I hope that one uh, is clear and you've been able to understand. Now, the tribes of uh, Israel will also, you know, be shown, you know, the, the, the tribes will be there. And for those who are saying, oh, the tribes have gone, they are lost, there are no tribes, blah, blah, blah. No, listen, all the tribes of Israel, they will show up again. Let me show you in Isaiah 11, Isaiah 11 verse 1, it says, uh, Isaiah 11 1, it says, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. This is Jesus, of course, you understand. And verse 4 says, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. That is Jesus. Let's see verse 12, verse 12 of Isaiah 11, verse 12 to 13. It says, and he shall set up and ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Jesus will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So all these tribes will be brought in together. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So now the tribes will start showing up back again when Jesus gathers them back again uh, to their place. Okay, let's also see. The families will grow. You see, there are people who ask, but uh, will these people, will they marry and, you know, have kids and things like that? The families will grow, you know. They will grow up and they'll be a mighty, you know, a mighty nation. But of course, we as the church, we will be ruling with Christ. So we'll be the rulers. But now these people, they'll be mortal. They'll be living, you know, they'll be doing every other thing. But they will multiply. Now, let's see about this. In Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel 36, let's go there, Ezekiel 36 to, uh, from verse 33, it tells us about how people will grow and there'll be massive and massive people and, you know, they will multiply. The Israelites is what I'm talking about. And of course, the other people likewise. Eh? Ezekiel 36, 33 to 38, it says, Thus says the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, you remember all Israel will be saved? From the day that I'll have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and the wastes shall be builded and the desolate land shall be tilled, okay? Where else it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. Before Israel was a desert, but now, it will, you know, it will be a place where you can till. It will be a green place, a good place. Verse 35, it says, and they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. You see, Jerusalem, Israel will change. It will be like the Garden of Eden. And the west and the desolate 
and ruined cities have become fenced and are inhabited, okay? Then the heathen that are left around about you shall know that the Lord built the ruined places and the plant that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. You see, there are, there are heathen. There are other heathens who will be around. The heathens will be around uh, Israel. They look and they'll say, there is really a true God in heaven. You see, you see. But of course, they'll be seeing him. That will not now be faith. It will be, they will see and they understand. We really went against this God and we could have just, you know, been good and everything could have been fine. And verse 37, thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of, uh, of by thy house of Israel, do it for them, okay? I will increase them with men like flock. So they will multiply, they'll have kids, they'll have families and multiply with men like a flock. As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in a solemn feast, so shall the west cities be filled with flock of men and shall know that I am the Lord. Are you seeing? So they'll marry they will have families, they will multiply, and they will feel again the earth, you know. They'll feel again the earth, and it will really be beautiful uh, during that time. So, likewise, God will also reinstate the Jewish laws and ordinances. You see what was happening back then, those celebrations, the Jewish laws, the ordinances, they'll be reinstalled back, and now people will have to go and worship God and do all his ordinances and all these things during that time. Now, let me show you in the book of Micah, the book of Micah here, let's go there. Micah 4, 4 from verse 1 to 2, it says, but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountain, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow and to eat, okay, people will be going to that mountain of God, which is Zion or Jerusalem. And many nations shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see, so people will be paying pilgrimage just the same way, the ordinances which were there with the Jews, now they'll be reintroduced to the whole world. Everyone in the whole world will have to go there. You know, they'll have to go there. And uh, of course, you know, worship God and do whatever is supposed to be done. So you have heard about Israel during the millennial time and what will happen. Now let's talk about God's creation, the all God's creation in uh, unison. How will it be? How will the creation co coexist? People and animals and, uh, you know, the land, how will it coexist? How will it, how will it be? Are we going to be in the same uh, earth that it was before? Uh, because right now we see there are deserts, you see the world is, uh, you know, nothing good grows unless you really till and you have a lot of hustle, all these things. How will the earth coexist? You see there are lions, there are animals which eat people and, you know, it's always scary. How will things correlate during that millennial kingdom. This is so easy and so simple and so en enticing to understand. Now, creatures of God will live in harmony. Let's see, Isaiah 11 from verse one, Isaiah 11, one. Let's see what it talks about here. Isaiah 11, one, it says, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, Jesus has come back. Verse 4, but with the righteousness shall he judge the poor, okay? He judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lip shall he slay the wicked, okay? Now, let's see verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the wolf will be dwelling with the lamb. So it means there'll be harmony. They'll, the wolf will not be eating the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the, with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. Now look at that. A lion, a lion and a leopard, you know, and a, uh, what is it? And a leopard shall lie down with the kid, you know, a child. 
a small kid, you know, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. Now, it means these animals will not even be, you know, doing stuff to people because of what? Something has changed, okay? And, uh, and the cow and the bear sh shall feed and the young one shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like an ox you see the lion will be eating grass so they'll, they'll not be eating uh, you know uh, people and eating other animals so it will be so beautiful and the suckling child shall play on the hall of the asp and the wind child shall put his hand on the cockroach's den you know sometimes you can i don't know what cockroach's den means but it, it just seems to be a bad, a bad place. Eh? Where maybe right now, if you put your hand there, you're beaten. Eh? And verse nine, they shall not hurt nor destroy uh, in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse. We shall stand and ensign the people so, uh, to it shall the gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious so you see everything will be so beautiful and so glorious and the animals and everything will just be correlating uh, relating with each other let's see also isaiah 35 let me also show you another uh, thing which will also be happening isaiah 35 you can of course these chapters you can read them over and over because a lot of information is there i don't want to read too much to waste time isaiah 35 from verse 1 to 7 it says the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom at the rose. You see, the desert will change and blossom, so there'll be no more deserts. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with the joy, with joy and singing, and the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto the excellency of Carmel and Shannon, and shall see the glory of the Lord and excellency of our Lord. You see, it's like uh, even some things which are not alive, they will come alive. You see, blossoming abundantly and rejoicing with joy and singing. So, how can a desert rejoice with joy and singing? You always hear that. Uh, uh, you see these movies that they try to portray that a, a, a tree is talking to people, uh, some things like that. It's like you're giving life to some things, you know. Probably they're picking from these Bible verses where during that time, almost everything will come to life and it will be like, it will so lively until you can see that the land is alive, you know. You can feel it is really alive and it's, you know. Uh, they are doing whatever he's supposed to do. And as, uh, verse three, it says, strengthen ye the weak hands and conform the feeble knees, okay? And conform the feeble knees. Say to them that are of fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man Leap as on hearts, and the tongue of the dumb sing, and in the wilderness shall waters break out. You see, even in the wilderness, water will be breaking out. It will be so green and so beautiful, and streams in the desert. Can you imagine that? There'll be streams from the desert, something which is cannot be seen now, and the patched ground shall become a pool. Patched grounds, the places where are really I don't know what patch I can use which word shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitations of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. You see how beautiful the world will have changed. And of course, you can uh, read over and over and over. You can continue there. So the earth and its inhabitants will have no deficiencies. You see, the blind will see, the lame will walk, and there'll be no deficiencies. You see what really brings deficiency right now in our world is because of um, intoxications of things, you know, diseases, you know, uh, bad air that you're breathing, the water is corrupt, the food is corrupt, everything is just confused. And that's why you see deficiencies. People cannot see well, people cannot hear well, the deficiency of uh, the joints and all these. And, and there are so many diseases right now. That time, it will be a different thing because the curse which was on the earth, you remember in the beginning, God cast the earth and he said, you know, you have to be tilled and people will have to eat from their sweat. Now, I believe that even things will be growing in the fields. 
You just walk in some place and you're seeing tomatoes growing by themselves. You see fruits growing, oranges, apples, grapes, and everything, and it's growing. At the... Do you think anybody will be running to go and steal? And there's a lot of food growing in the wilderness by itself. You just go there and eat. But now the world is a bit uh, different and it's a bit confused and it's, it's real, uh, just mixed up, you know? So that time it will really, really be beautiful. And also we'll have long life. You see right now people, life expectancy is between 70 and 80 if you're really lucky. But that time people will live long life because everything health-wise will be good. And also because of other things that I'll explain to you. Now, let's see. Isaiah 65, verse 20. Let me show you about long life, how it will be. 65, uh, 20. It says, there shall be no more thence an infant of days. So there are no short, you know, infant dyings, you know, people dying young. There shall be no more an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. You see? An old man who has not filled his days. Now they die, people die, you know, young and things like that. No ma young, uh, old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die at an 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. You see, if it's somebody who has died uh, like a child or maybe uh, you, you have died, something has happened, a calamity to you and you have died. The way we see now like ch children dying at very young age, if you die at 100 years, it will be called an accursed kind of death. Something really wrong happened to you, you know? So people will live long lives. I believe people will be living like 900 years, 800 years, probably even a thousand years, you know? The same way it was back then. Now let's see, family life also will continue. There are those who say, oh, family will not be there, blah, blah, blah. Let's see Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30, 18. It explains about family life will continue. And, uh, you know, people will get uh, children and children, children, and, you know, they'll blossom and things like that. Of course, uh, the people now, the heathen and the, and the Jews in, in, the, in that millennial time. Now, let's see. Jeremiah 30, 18. <clears throat> Jeremiah 30, 18. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. The city shall be builded upon her own heap and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them shall make merry and i will multiply them and they shall not be few i will also glorify them and they shall not be small this is not glorified bodies but means i will exalt them i'll make them strong i'll make them uh, you know, uh, be better than the way they are right now in the world. You know, they'll multiply and multiply and be strong and be healthy and uh, things like that. So you see, families and, uh, you know, family life will continue. People will um, uh, grow up more and things like that. Now, let's see something else also. Nature will become lively. What I was talking about, nature will become, it's like alive. Have you ever seen trees which are really alive? Forget the trees that you're seeing right now. They are really dead. Now that time, they'll be alive. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, it, it gives us uh, this one. Isaiah 5, 5, where is it? From verse 12. It shows us that uh, now the nature and uh, uh, things like that, they, will, they come alive. Isaiah 55, 12, it says, 12 and 13, it says, for you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. Look at that. <laughs> the mountains and the hills will be singing. So they'll be alive. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. <laughs> you see how beautiful it will be? That the trees and of the field shall be clapping hands. They'll be alive. You will be able to see. It's like all nature has come alive. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fear tree. And the, instead of the bria shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be uh, to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. I don't know th those trees, what kind it is. I know it's of course from a bad tree to a good tree, but it, it shows that things will be alive. It will be so beautiful in that time. 
Now, let's go also to something else. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to know more about what will be happening towards nature and the people and the co interaction and things like that those verses that are spoken about you can just uh, check them again and reading all through you'll be able to see how beautiful that time will be now because of time let's let me go to the church what will happen to the church to us the saints the believers right now who are believers right now where will we be during the time of uh, the millennial time how will it be where will you be as a christian you know the christians in the millennium where will you be Revelation, let's start from there. Revelation 19, 7. It tells us about the believers right now, the church, where they will be. Revelation 19, uh, 7 to 11. It tells us, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell into a feast to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou uh, not do it, for I am a fellow servant. I am a fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have testimony of Jesus, worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So first and foremost, we have known that we'll be in the marriage supper of the Lamb. We will be married to Christ. That is number one. That is the Christians. And now if we are married, we become one with Christ. So whatever Christ does, we do. Whatever Christ is, we also become. We will be like him. We will do things like him during that millennial time, okay? So we will be in one spirit because the Bible says, and I think that's why it brought the whole aspect of marriage. You know, God brought the whole aspect of marriage to show that two shall become one. You know, you'll become one and married with Christ. So you'll be like him and you'll be ruling like him. You'll be a uh, 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 priest like him. You'll be kings like him. You'll be, you know, lords like him doing different things, you know. So now first you have understood we'll be married to Christ. That is number one. During uh, And then we'll come back with him in the second advent or the second coming of Christ. So after we're married with him in heaven and then we come back again now with him. So now what happens? We will be ruling with Christ, Revelation 24. Let me show you this. Revelation 24. It says, and I saw thrones. You see, these are different thrones. And uh, they that sat on them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither had they received his mark upon his forehead, nor in their hands. Uh, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So all Christ's saints will live and reign with them for a thousand years. So we will be reigning with Christ. We will be, we'll be ruling with Christ for a thousand years. And again, let's see Romans 8.14. Romans 8.14. Let's see about us uh, ruling with Christ, also reigning with Christ. Romans 8, 14, it says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are sons of God. You know, you'll become a son of God. So if you are a son of God, you also behave like him. A child behaves like his father. If the father is the king, then you're also small kings. You're also doing like your father. So that one tells us that we will be ruling and reigning with him. Okay. Now let's also see 2 Timothy 2, 12. 2 Timothy 2.12, it also tells us, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. You see, right now you're suffering, you're going through tribulation trials, you're facing it rough. Don't worry, you'll be reigning that time, you'll be like him, you'll be a child of God, a child of a king, reigning and ruling with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. So if you deny him right now, He'll also deny you. But now that explains that it's so beautiful because we'll be ruling with Christ. Let's also see. 
what will how will your reigning depend you know how will you rule will you will we all of us just have a subdivided place and then you know rule wherever you want no it will be out of how you you were uh, how you what you did for christ the energy and the things that you did for christ and the ministry that you did and uh, there are people who just get saved and they say as long as i'm going to heaven i'm safe but you will Remember, people are going to reign for a thousand years. They're going to rule for a thousand years. And the bigger the place that you will rule and reign and the more power and the more, you know, uh, shining and glory will be according to how you lived your life. That's why it's very important to live your life in a good way. Luke 19, Luke 19, 17, it tells us how will God balance who will rule where and rule where and rule where and rule where? It's in Luke 19, 17. It says, and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one title of the law. Uh, is, am I really there? Luke, yes. Uh, Luke 19, sorry, I'm, I'm in 17. Luke 19, 17, it says, and he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because you have been faithful in very little have thou authority over 10 cities? You see, you have been faithful. If you've been faithful in little, much, or whatever, the faithful you have been, the greater the places that you will reign and the more power and the more might and authority and uh, glory you will have in that time, okay? So it will depend with you and how you lived your life. If you hid yourself and just got saved and sit at home and said, okay, I'm saved, I know I'm sealed and sanctified, I know I'm going to heaven, and you do nothing, you don't preach to other people who are lost, you don't live a good testimony to, uh, of Christ, you don't do what is right, you don't escape temptations, you don't, every time you escape temptations, you live faithfully, you preach to others, you wait for Christ, and you read your Bible, and you try to be close to Christ, Everything is being counted and you'll be paid a hundred folds, you know? So work for God right now. Let's see also uh, 2 Timothy 2.12, which also tells us again concerning the same. 2 Timothy 2.12, uh, it tells us, um, I think I've just read it actually. Let me just also reread it, of course. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. So suffering basically means if you just don't get saved and sit down and say, I don't want to go and reach people out there. I don't want to waste time like this, preaching to people, trying to see, can people just at least get saved? Even if it's one or two people online or maybe somewhere else, or maybe I preach to a brother or I preach to a sister or a friend. And you say, I don't want to suffer. I know I'm sealed and sanctified. I know I'm going to heaven. I know I can't lose my salvation. Now I am set. If you just sit down, then you have nothing to gain that time. But you should work and work and work for Christ and, and count everything nothing, at least to win Christ. You see, there are people chasing different things which are of no sense. People chasing careers, chasing this, chasing that, which is all vanity. The Bible tells us that, <laughs> you see, the birds of the air don't even work. This and this. Are, are you not more important than them? And God, he says that I know what you need even before you pray. And he says, seek ye the kingdom of God first and everything else I'll, I'll add unto you. No wonder you see people, they work so much day and night and day and night and day and night. And uh, it's like you're working and the money is going to, uh, you know, pockets with holes. And you ask yourself, why is it? Because it, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Yes, it's not bad to work. But as you work, put your focus on the things of God. You see people just give God a quarter percent and they say every other thing is for me but you have the wrong priorities my friend the right priority is work for god because you're working for a eternal kingdom which is coming but you you're only working for 20 years 10 years and then you retire and then even you can't enjoy what you've worked for what what's that it's all vanity as you work remember to work for god and do what is right now let's see about uh the world, mm, the world of the millennium, okay? What will the world be like? Actually, I'd written the word. <laughs> the world of the millennium, okay? Now, how will people be saved during that time? You see, right now, we are saved by grace through faith. 
we are saved by grace through faith. If you, if you have faith in Jesus Christ, you are saved. But uh, during the time of tribulation, people are not saved by faith only, but I've told you you're saved by faith plus works. But in the time of uh, the millennial kingdom, people will be saved by works only. Works only. Like I've told you, if you don't obey, you are thrown live, cast live into hell. So it will be by works. It is do good and live. It's not have faith. No, there'll be nothing like faith or faith plus works because faith is doing, you know, believing what you are not seeing. Now, this time you are seeing everything. Jesus is here. Hell is here. Everything is here. So you'll have to believe. Uh, you'll have to uh, use your works. You know, it will be salvation by works that time. Let, let, me, let me prove to you what I'm talking about. Let's go to Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33, 14. It tells us about this. Isaiah 33, 14 to 17. It tells us, mm, the sinners in Zion are, are afraid. You see, this is Zion, Jerusalem, during that time. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? You see what he's saying? Who will live with that devouring, uh, devouring fire? People can see and they say, wow, that's hell. We are scared. We don't want to do what is wrong against God. Who among us shall dwell with, with everlasting burnings? They are seeing and they're saying, who will go there and, and be burned forever? And we can see that is hell. Who will do that? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despises the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of tribe or of bribes, that stoppeth his ear from hearing of the blood and shutteth his ear from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks and shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty and you shall they shall behold the land that is far off. You see, that time people will be seeing, and they're seeing that is hell. Who is going to stay there and be burnt? No, I'm not going to stay there and be burnt. I rather follow the statutes of God, which has been speaking here, that whosoever will walk righteously, he'll have some advantages. Because you're seeing, I don't want to do this because there's another advantage here. It's something that I'm seeing. It's my works. I choose this or I choose this, you see? That time it will be salvation by works, okay? And uh, even when I'm, uh, I'm speaking about that, let me also show you, I think in Isaiah 43, if I'm not wrong, I wish is the, I, I hope is this. Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43 or 37. I, I, there's 30, anyway, let, let me leave that verse. There's another verse which speaks about people will be able to see Satan. And then they'll be able to say, is this the one who really messed us up and who, who deceived the nations? Is this the one? And people, let, let me see this verse. Let me just uh, share my screen here and uh, show you this, this uh, very interesting. Yeah? Mm, just a minute, let me show you this because I, I think this is really, 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 really important to show you. Uh, is this the one who deceived nations? Let me see. Uh, where is that? Uh, let me show you. I want to show you this because uh, it's really, really important to see. People will be able to see Satan himself where he's he is there. And they'll say, what? This is the guy. Uh, Judges, Chronicles, Job, Isaiah. Yes, this is, this is it. Now, you'll be able to see here. Now, see. Mm, for thou hast said in your heart. I will, now, this is uh, speaking uh, to Satan. You see, God is speaking to Satan. He's telling him, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend unto heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north and i will ascend above the heights of the cloud i'll be like the most high yet see what god is saying yet satan you'll be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit and they that shall see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and shall consider thee, saying is this the man that made the earth to tremble 
that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. You see what, what the Bible is saying here? That a time will come and people will be looking at Satan, meaning hell will be opened. it will be somewhere where people can see. And they'll be seeing Satan there and they'll say, what? Is this the one who deceived the nations? Is this the one who made everybody fight against his brother? This one, you see, that that's explains that hell will be open and people will have to make a choice. People will have to make a choice and say, hey, for sure, I have to follow Christ and do, you know, be saved by my works. I have to do what is right and leave what is wrong. And also we see that the world will be filled with the knowledge of God. You see right now, the world is filled with deceptions of Satan. People are against God. Everything that they think and what they talk and what they believe and what they Everything right now is all against God. But that time is going to be so beautiful that every, world, every person in the world will have the knowledge of God. Let's see, Isaiah 1. Okay, and this one I had already spoken about it. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Okay, verse 4. But with righteousness shall the judge... Shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So they'll have to follow him. They'll have to do what is right. And verse nine says, they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The whole earth will be full of the knowledge of God. Everybody will know God. Now they are pretending, oh, I'm an atheist. Oh, I don't believe in God. Oh, I'm a scientist. I'm a this kind of guy. I, I believe in myself. I believe in that. I, I believe in a tree. I believe in uh, others are saying, you see, I believe in the universe. I believe in this. I believe in science. That time, the whole world will have the knowledge of God and they'll have to believe in God. Now, another thing, people during that time, for their salvation and also to be right with God, they love to offer sacrifices and keep the feasts of tabernacles. You know, if you don't keep the feast, then there is no rain. This is exactly what the Bible says. During that time, you love to keep the feasts of God. Let's go to Zechariah again the book of Zechariah, it says that that time you love to keep the feasts of God. If you don't, then there's no rain for you. Zechariah 14 verses 9, Zechariah 14 verse 9, it says something here. It says, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Okay. It's saying that day, He'll be the only God. Let's see verse 16 to 21. It says, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up to the uh, up from year to year to worship the king. So people will be going year to year to Jerusalem to worship Jesus during that time. The Lord of hosts and to keep the feasts of the tabernacles, you see. So people will be going year to year to pay pilgrimage to Jesus, you know. They'll be going there to worship Jesus, like the way the, the Muslim do every year. They go for pilgrimage in, um, uh, I think, Saudi Arabia. Now, this time, people will be going for pilgrimage to worship Jesus at the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth and to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So if you're not worship and go there and worship Christ that time, then there'll be no rain for you. Are you seeing the point? And if the family of Egypt go not up and, uh, and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So there'll be a plague. He'll smite you with plagues if you don't come to worship him. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of the tabernacles. Self-explanatory. In that day, shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. The pots, of the Lord, the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. 
Yea, in every port in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see thee therein, and in that day there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So people will sacrifice for Christ. They will do everything in accordance to what Christ is saying, okay? And the finally, concerning the world during the millennium, is that the world, the general world, everyone in the world will recognize Israel as a superior nation. Right now, the US, Russia, China, Japan, I don't know, many, many countries, they are fighting to be superior. We are the power of the world. By that time, Israel will be the superior of the whole world. Whether you like it or you don't like it, you'll have to agree with that. Israel will be the superior of the whole world. Let's go to Zechariah back again. Zechariah, the Zechariah is here. Let's see. <laughs> Zechariah 8, 22, it tells us about that, that Israel will be recognized as the superior nation of the whole world. Zechariah 8, 22, it says, uh, to 23. Yeah, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Okay, thus says the Lord of hosts. In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages and the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Are you seeing that? So that time, people will recognize the God of Israel and they will go there and worship that God of Israel and they will recognize and many will st stop and they'll stop Jews and tell them, please take me to your God. I want to believe in that God of yours. I want to do what the, that God of yours, the God of Isaac, Jacob and, uh, uh, and Abraham, I want to follow him because that is the true God, you know? People will recognize Israel and they'll recognize that Jews are the chosen of God, of course. Now, finally, let's talk about the last thing, which is after the millennium. So people have seen what the millennium will be like, how it will be, you know, all those things uh, that people will do different, you know, Israel to the church, to what Jesus will do, you know, the nations, how animals will interact with people and things like that. Now, let's see, after the millennium, after their thousand years, what will happen? What will happen? Are we continuing again after the millennium or something will happen? Now, let's see. After the millennium, do you realize that Satan will come back again to deceive the people? <laughs> and uh, I'll explain to you why Satan will have to come back again to deceive people. Let's go to Revelation 20 from verse 7 to 9. It says, Seven to nine. And when thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. You remember when you were starting, I told you Satan will be bound a thousand years in a bottomless pit, in a place where he'll be bound there. Now, after this, he'll be let loose. Now, let's see this. He shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is the sand of the sea okay and uh, and they went up of uh, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from god out of heaven and devoured them and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever now you may worry and ask yourself, why will God again after a peaceful time, you know, everything is living so nice. Why is he still letting, you know, lose of Satan? And why is this happening? Now, this is the reason. God wants to show human beings that, you know, everybody was complaining. Oh, I did this because Satan deceived me. It was not me. It is Satan. It is Satan. No, God is going to, he's going to bind Satan and put him aside for a thousand years. So that you can check and see how you live without blaming Satan. And after that, having seen how life has been so smooth and everything has been so okay, Satan will be let loose. So that now he will deceive people and people will have to make a choice and say, do I follow Satan 
or do I follow Jesus? After having seen what Jesus has done all those a thousand years, how Jesus has been a righteous judge, will I be deceived into following Satan or following Christ? And this will be the ultimate uh, choosing again. Because that time, people will have to make a choice and say, now, I think from a thousand years of learning, I've learned that Jesus is a true righteous Messiah, is a real God, and he has done this for me. So they will choose him and others, they'll say, no, uh, I will follow Satan. Why? Because God is trying to show that unless you give yourself completely to him, you will still fall into sin. And unless you close your eyes fully and say, I am following Christ, then you will still fall into your own iniquity. It's not really Satan. You see, people have been complaining all through the years and saying, it is Satan, it is Satan who judged, is the one who deceived me. No, the heart of man is wicked. And unless you say to yourself and say, I will follow Christ 100%, you will still be deceived. That's the reason why God will let loose Satan, so that he can show that example. And of course, Satan will deceive a, a thousand, thousands and thousands of people. You see it saying that, uh, the number that will be going to fight against Jesus in Jerusalem will be as the sand of the sea. So they will come so many and then they'll say, now let's go and remove this righteous dictator and let's live our lives. You know, Satan has deceived them again, like he did in the beginning. And uh, the funny thing is that as they'll be going there to fight Jesus in Jerusalem, what will happen? Fire will come from heaven and it will wipe them all, you know? Wipe them all and Satan will be cast into the lake of fire. And that will be his fate. Now, let's see something else. The deceived, what will happen to the deceived? The deceived will be burned up by fire from heaven. Revelation 29. And they went up on, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. You know, the deceived people will go and compass the camp of God. You know, they are surrounding it. Mm hmm the, the, of the saints about and the beloved of the city and fire came from God out of heaven and devoured them. All these deceived people will be devoured by fire. So that will be their fate. And also, let's see, Satan and his people will burn on lake of fire. I've explained, but let me just uh, show you from verse 10 to 15, Revelation 20, it says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. You see now, they'll be cast into the lake of fire. Now, the Bible is talking about the lake because it had already spoken about a lake of fire. The, 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 the Antichrist and the false prophet, earlier I talked about when Jesus came, he threw them into a lake of fire. Now, Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire, meaning is the same lake where the the, the, the uh, false prophet and the antichrist are, okay? And uh, they'll be tormented day and night forever. And also uh, we see in verse um, 11, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it and from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. So now God establishes the great white throne judgment. That is the biggest judgment which will be there. And now people will be judged, you know, people will be judged during that time. So God will judge the whole earth. Everybody who has died from back, starting from Adam all the way to a thousand years, anyone who has ever died, those who died in the seas, those who died the where or where, and all people will stand before God in judgment and they'll be judged. And this judgment will be a judgment of works because it's not a judgment of, uh, believing salvation because the believers have already reigned and ruled with Christ and their fate was already done at Calvary. They already accepted Christ out of court agreement and they became saints of Christ. Now, this is a judgment of works. Okay. You'll be asked, you, you had, you saw, you, uh, you had that you, you are supposed to be saved. You refused. Why? Oh, I did not hear. Then now, uh, the saints, because the Bible says the saints will judge the earth, and then the saints will be called there, and then I'll, uh, somebody will be saying, uh, Keith, come here. Do you remember the time that you posted on Facebook, and you said that uh, Jesus is coming, that people should believe in him? So and so, did you see that post? Yes, I, I, I saw it. I did not see it. There'll be a big screen, and you're shown your life. 
your, your, your life in real HD. Forget the TVs that you see near smart TVs. You'll be seen, even the way you were breathing that day, you'll be seen. And you will be shown, this is you. And you saw it and you commented and you said, ah, I don't want that Jesus. We'll be there as witnesses to say, yes, I posted that post. And then he commented or she commented and say, I don't want that God. And you'll be told, so now, if you don't want God, where do uh, unrighteous people go? To the lake of fire. Poop, you're thrown. Another one comes and he's told, oh, you know, I did not hear about the gospel. No, let's see your movie. Pa, 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 pa. The movie is here. You remember this day? You saw a signpost somewhere. You remember you saw this Bible put somewhere by a brother and you threw it away and you said you don't want to hear. Come here, brother, witness. Did you put the Bible there? Yes, I did put the Bible. That's how the righteous will be judging the earth. They'll be judging everyone with Christ. will be there as witnesses. And this will be their fate. After all those people are judged at the great white throne judgment. You see, they are not judged at the at the judgment seat of Christ. That is for the, for, for the saints, which is all about works. Now, this one is the great white throne judgment. After a thousand years, everything will be stopped and this will happen. Now, verse 11, let me read for you the story. Uh, Revelation 20, 11, it says, And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small, great and uh, uh, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. You hear books were opened, books of what you are doing. Everything you're doing right now is being documented down. The books were opened. We, uh, uh, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. Who is life? Jesus Christ. If you're not in the book of Jesus Christ, and how will you be in the book of Jesus Christ if you are if you believed in him? He wrote you in his book. But if you are not there, see your fate, which is an, uh, the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things were written in the books according to their works. So right now, you're not in the book of life, but now you'll be judged according to the other books which are writing your life. You know, this one was like this. This one was like this. Those books is where you'll be judged from. And now you'll be judged according to your works. Right now, we're not judged according to your works. We're judged according to did we believe, you know? Verse 13, it says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and the hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Everything you did against God, you will be judged at that time. And these are for the only the unrighteous, okay? This is only the unrighteous people who will be judged according to their works. And the death and the hell were cast into the lake of fire. You see why I was saying hell is very different from a lake of fire? Now, death and the hell were cast into the lake of fire, okay? This is the second death. Now, anyone who is not saved is dead, you know? It's dead. According to Christ, you are not alive if you're not saved. You're just a walking zombie. So death and the hell was cast into the lake of fire. Everyone who is not a believer, who is dead still, dead in his sins, he was cast into the lake of fire together with even the hell itself and every other ingredient and everything which is in that hell. That is demons and everything in that hell, they were all cast into the lake of fire. And whosoever was not found in, written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see? So if your name is not in the book of life, life, like I told you, is Jesus Christ. Jesus gives life. So if your name is not in the book of Christ, the book of life, then you will be cast into that lake of fire forever and ever. And you will burn and burn and burn. And you will burn a thousand years, 10,000 years, 20, a million years, a billion years. And you're there burning and it's like you're dying, but you're not dying. And you're there and asking yourself, what's really happening? When, when is this going to stop? But it will never stop forever and ever. Just because of only one day. Just because of 20, 10 years or five years of pleasure that you really enjoyed and you say, I don't want to hear about this God of yours. I don't want to serve this God of yours. I want to believe in science. I'm really sharp. I want to believe in science. I, I'm an atheist. This thing about God is just fake illusion. You will burn in that hell for thousands and thousands and millions and billions and zillions and quadillions, I don't know, of years. 
where your warm will not quench, the, the, the water will not quench, the fire will not quench, and your warm dies not. Your soul will not die. You'll be burning every day and you're feeling, you're feeling you're burning and your burning is like you're dying, but you're not dying. It's like you're dying, you're dying, you're dying, but you're not dying. You come back again and you're dying again, but you're not really dying. Just imagine how painful that will be because you refused, you refused the free gift of salvation which Jesus has given you. And you say, no, I don't want to hear. Now let's see, what about the saints, the Christians, the people who uh, uh, were saved and the people who lived well and they did everything for Christ, what will happen to them? Revelation 21 from verse 1 to 9, it says this. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. So the Bible says, the, the heaven and the earth, these ones that we have, after a thousand years, they will all be destroyed. Okay? Listen. And the Christ will create a new heaven and a new earth. Now we'll have a new ones, everything new. And God will put us again back to live the way we were supposed to live in the Garden of Eden before we thought and messed all this much. See, and I, John, saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. Who is the tabernacle of God? God himself, he will tabernacle. He will live with men. That was his initial intention. He wanted to be walking in the Garden of Eden in the evening, just talking to us, you know, living among us. He will tabernacle with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. There will be no more death. Satan and all the wicked people have been thrown in the lake of fire. So there's no more death. Neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. It's gone, all those careers and corrupt things and corrupt people and people who don't care about others it's gone it's gone now it's a new thing and he, he that sat upon the throne said behold i make all things new and he said unto me write for these worlds are true and faithful he said unto me it is done i am alpha and omega i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end i will give unto them and uh, uh, I will give unto them uh, and to him that thirst the fountain of the water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. You see the good promises that God is promising during uh, that time. But the fearful and unbelieving, listen to the word. The fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came to me one of the seven angels, which had seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, come up hither, I show you thee the bride, the lamb's wife. You know, and of course, I don't want to go much more. But uh, you see, as God will create a new heaven and a new earth, and we will dwell there, and he will start everything. He will create everything new, and we'll live again all happily ever after. But to the wicked people and the despisers and the homongers and the killers, the murderers, the, 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 the liars, they'll have their place in the lake of fire, burning forever and ever. They'll burn and burn and burn and it's not stopping. It's like it's stopping, but it's not stopping. And they're burning and they're crying and they're saying, God, please forgive me. It's my last time. No. And you tell them, I gave you all the chances in life. I gave you the gospel. I told you, please believe the gospel. And you did not want to. And now you'll have to burn there for a thousand years, 20,000 years, a million years, a billion years. And you're burning and burning just because you had 20 years of enjoying and you did not want to hear anything about Christ. Choose life right now. You know, choose life, choose the gospel. The gospel is always there. 
and to be saved right now. You can be saved and change and run away from all these problems which are coming upon the earth. And you can be saved and live happy ever after or you choose burning in hell. Because whether you believe it or you're not, these two things are real and it's going to happen it is it is. So you may ask, how can I be saved? What can I do to be saved? The Bible tells us in Ephesians 1.13, very simple, in whom you believed, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you are uh, you, you, in whom you believe, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, who is the earnest of your inheritance and to the praise of his glory. Now look at this, whom you believed after that you heard the word of truth, which is the gospel of salvation. So you must hear the word of truth so that you can believe him. Unless you hear the gospel, you can never believe. How well will you believe on something that you have not heard, you have not understood? Salvation is a change of mind. Repentance is a change of mind. When I tell you repent, repent means uh, repentance comes from the from the word metanoia. Metanoia is a Hebrew word. Or I don't know Hebrew or Greek word means a change of mind. You must have a change of mind. Change your mind and say, this is what I want to do. I want to believe in Christ because I'm understood him. So it's very simple. You have to hear the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation. Now, where do we find that gospel, which we have to believe? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says the following. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is what Paul is telling us. This is the gospel which saves you. If you keep it in memory, you understand how Christ died. How did Jesus die? Jesus died by shedding his blood at the cross. Why? Because without shedding of blood at the cross, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So why should there be blood shed? Because the Bible says in Leviticus 17, 11, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that atones for the soul. So without the blood, you can never be reconciled with God. Why? Why? Why should someone die? Because the, we've been told that Life is in the blood. So if I remove life, if I remove the blood, then I've removed life. Because of what? As Romans says, the book of Romans, that the wages of sin is death. So I have to remove that life through the blood. You have to die if you've done something sinful. But here came one man 2,000 years ago who said, it's okay, Keith, uh, don't die. Don't remove your blood. I will remove my own blood. I will, I will die for your sins. And if you believe in me, you'll be saved. So this man was Jesus Christ. And he laid at the cross. He forgot everything. He forgot where he comes from, his glory, his power. And he said, I'll do this for this person. I will shed my blood. I will die for you. So that if you believe, you have eternal life. My friend, if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, you will be saved. And you will be able to pass from death unto life. You will not be the dead and hell who are all cast into the lake of fire. You will be now alive. You are alive in Christ. So believe the gospel. And after you believe, you understand. You just understand that Jesus truly died for me. He died for me. I was supposed to die and he took that place for me. If you believe that and understand then there's nothing else that you need to do. Just tell God what you have believed. Just confess with your mouth and tell him, Jesus Christ, I believe I've now understood that you really died for my sins. I've understood what happened at the cross 2,000 years ago. I was supposed to die, but you died for my sins. You shed your blood. You are innocent and you did this for me. You died for my sins. And I believe that for sure it was not in vain. You died for me. And now I believe you. 
and I've forgotten everything else, which is evil. And all the things that I used to trust have changed from that. And now I put all my trust 100% in you. Please be my Lord and my Savior. I trust you because I know you died for my sins and you were buried and that you arose again the third day according to the scriptures, according to me. And brothers and sisters, when you just confess out and you believe and you confess out what you have believed and tell Jesus this what I believed and I've confessed, immediately the Holy Spirit comes inside you and is sealed in you. And the Holy Spirit is the assurance is our earnest of our inheritance, is the earnest, is the assurance that you'll go to heaven and you'll even inherit more rewards there and you'll be a child of God and you'll never go to hell, you will go to heaven. So I hope this has been a blessing. You can share to other people who have, uh, uh, please share to others, let them hear, let them know something. You're not doing this for the views, you're doing it for so that somebody else can hear the gospel and that they may be saved. Share to as many places as you can. And also you can go to my YouTube, Keith Mwoki or Facebook, you, you check there are so many other videos that are posted on different topics. Please learn and let's edify one another and let's share to others and let's be saved. You know, Jesus is coming soon. So God bless you and have a blessed time. See you on Wednesday, God willing. Same time, same place.